I know now that I'm doomed to feel this pain for the rest of my life, or until I can find out where it's hidden. Y you see, after discovering a the secret, I've damned myself to this wheelchair. The doctor stated he cannot find any plausible reason that I would be in this much pain, but I can barely move before this excruciating pain overwhelms my body. And I collapse back into my wheeled position. If only I could find out where it was hidden. If only I could find out. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys don't quite understand what's going on, so let me rewind the picture for you guys so you can have the full story. It was the eve of our second wedding anniversary, when I first noticed the slight numbness in my arm. I came home from work that afternoon, greeted my wife, who was in the bathroom, cleaning out all the hairbrushes from their months of collection. I chuckled as she tugged out the clumps of dead hair. Damn! <laughs> With all that, you pretty sure you can make a wig for my brother! I would, um pointlessly remark. My brother at this point in our lives is not gifted in that sense, at least as much as I was. And I had often given him crap and about it occasionally. My wife snickered back. Oh, you're terrible. And she would give me a swift kiss on the lips as I headed into the bathroom to change out of my work clothes and into something more comfortable. More specifically, a t-shirt and my um, Guinness flip-flops. I immediately hopped over to my computer to check my email and begin my evening's task of chatting with online friends, the few I've made over the past months. My wife peeked over the corner and gave me that ugly sigh she does when I do something that she disapproves of. You work all day on that computer, and you come home just to do the same thing. Why don't you spend some time with me tonight? Uh, okay, honey, um, I promise, just let me finish this. That was my trusty excuse to buy some time. And before you knew it, it was time for bed. There she sat, the majority of the night, on the near end of the couch, patiently waiting for me to finish this, and increasingly grow more and more impatient with me, before finally giving up and shutting off the television and simply heading off to bed. I stayed up an hour or two longer before I joined her, and that's when I noticed it. This numbness. This in my left arm. I surveyed my arm for any skin blemish or any sort of cut that might be the source of this discomfort, but I couldn't find no such mark. I stretched my arm out, twisting it back and forth until the pain had subsided. Chalking it all up to go growing older, I, I hopped back into bed, embraced my wife who wiggled ever so much closer to me, and fell asleep. It was until about 3 in the morning, when, when I woke up with searing pain shooting up all along my left arm. I could not get comfortable in bed anymore. What's wrong, hun? Apparently, I had tossed and turned so violently that I had stirred my wife from her slumber. Nothing, hun. Ah, God. Ah, my arm hurts a little bit. It'll be fine. I lied my ass off. This was no normal twitch or muscle spasm. It hurt like hell. But I, I didn't need to bother my wife with that. She, she's got enough on her mind. Okay, but if you flop around like that anymore, I'm gonna sleep on the couch. My wife, disgruntled, annoyed, rolled back over into the sheets and cocooned herself. I sat back up on the bed and grabbed a pillow. Nah, no, no need. I'll, I'll hit the couch. Just surf the web and the net to get my mind off of it. Go back to sleep, hun. I stood up and headed for the couch, threw my pillow upon the cushions, and trotted over my computer. Shit! I, I forgot to turn it off earlier from this evening. I didn't want to turn it back on and have that obnoxious startup chime. My wife, my arm wasn't as bad now. I just plopped back down onto the couch and tried to make the best of it. As soon as I lay down on the couch, the pain returned with such a fury that was so tremendous that I nearly screamed. 
What the f ah! I clenched my left arm with my right hand, still trying to find a visible explanation for the soreness. And as quickly as it appeared, the pain was gone. I was now utterly confused. Was I having a stroke? A heart attack? Maybe I should call 911. Nah, no. No, no, no. It's just, it's just a really, really bad muscle spasm. Probably pinched a nerve somewhere. I'll just deal with it until- ah -ha! The raging inferno of paralyzing agony has returned. Fuck! This time, it wasn't, it wasn't just inhabiting my left arm, but now it's traveling down my leg. Ah, oh, fuck. I was really starting to begin to worry here. I, I tried to suck it up, but the pain was almost acted like a garden hose. You can only pinch off the stream for so long. Before the pressure builds up and builds up and bursts with such ferocity than before. I collapsed on the floor. I, I tried moving my fingers, but I felt as if my hand was being pulled, pumped full of... <sighs> something I, I can't remember right now. I attempted to wiggle my foot, but I felt the sensation as if it was perpetually suffering from the pins and needles of falling asleep. I looked around frantically for my phone. Thank God, it was on my right side. I reached out for it and got it, and, and attempted to call 911, but before I could complete it, my, my arm shook violently and then fell limp. The searing pain that followed was like a raging river, both my arms now, rendering them useless. Honey! I shouted, hoping my wife would come to my rescue. I attempted to crawl back into the bedroom, but I was only able to travel a few feet before my right leg had been stricken with the same affliction. Honey! I beckoned once more. I did my best to prop myself up against the couch where I lay. I sat up and glared across the darkness, and I opened the bathroom door for what seemed to be an eternity before I, before I finally heard a mumbled, Yes? Honey, I, I need your help. I'm in a lot of pain here. I began to sob. The pain, I, I thought, couldn't possibly get worse. However, I was dead wrong as it shot through my body like lightning. I thought I was going to die. I couldn't feel my fingers. I couldn't feel my toes. I, I couldn't feel any of my appendages. Tears began to run down my face. I looked up once more, and I could see my wife standing there in the doorway, the doorway to our bedroom, watching me. Honey! Call 911. I, I can't feel my arms, I, and I can't feel my leg. As I said those words, my wife slowly walked towards me and tossed an object at me. I, I didn't see what it was until it bounced with a grimy thud in my lap and slid onto the floor. I wanted to wipe away my tears to clear my eyes, but my hands wouldn't allow it. So I tried to focus on it as best as I could at this human figure that lay between my legs. Thankfully, my eyes did cooperate, and I did begin to piece together what it was that lay before me. Its eyes were lifeless black orbs, its skin was composed of a rough burlap and moldy old felt, and a stitching of gnarled twine and wire. I peered closely into his face. It was me, or at least it was made to look like me. I looked up at my wife as she drew closer. I gazed down at the doll and noticed the doll's dull blonde gray hair sticking out of its head, the tangled mess upon his head that resembled my own hairstyle. She collected my hair from the bathroom's hairbrush earlier today. What the hell is this? I would bark at my wife, and then... And then... I, I saw the last details that made my heart sink. Jammed deep into each and every single one of its arms and legs was a long ornate hairpin. My wife took the doll and lovingly cradled it. She took out the needle, bearing the heavy red yarn. You see, honey, you're always on your computer, and you never spend time with me anymore. So, for our anniversary, I gave myself a present. You bitch! Let me go! But, but, but before I could finish what I really wanted to say, I was rendered silent as... She quickly stitched the doll's mouth shut. She took my motionless, silent body to the hospital and let the doctors question why I was in such a vegetative state. I could still see and hear everything, but no. But no, could, no one could read my eyes, so they released me. They released me into the care of my wife. Later that night, 
and confined me to this cursed wheelchair. Now all day and all night, I'm forced to spend every waking moment with my barbaric wife. She cuddles next to me and tells me that she'll love me for the rest of her and my natural life. But if only I could find where she hid that fucking doll. That day. <laughs> that day will come much sooner than she expects. And now on to the review. I am pretty sure that a lot of you are sick of this segment that is completely unscripted, but for better or for worse, why don't I just dive into this thing? This story was written by a good friend of mine, Murphy1970 something, also known as Well Hay Productions. We've worked together in the past, and to be frank, I was more than happy to read this story. It was a decent story. I loved the concept, and I loved the writing. Except for a few minor gripes that I would really like you guys to think out or at least take a more empirical look at. If you would like to notice that the story is, and I actually told him this from uh, on t Tumblr, but he insisted that I read it entirely as is, so I respected his wishes and decided to do that. But the story goes from present text to past text, where the guy is recalling things that happened, but quite frequently it kind of diverges off of that, where things will happen to the character in real time despite it being completely remembered. The story isn't exactly written like a flashback as much as it's kind of just really off, as again, the character is retelling his tale, and instead of saying, my wife said this, it's quite literally quoting his wife word for word in senses that really wouldn't be spoken in that manner if he was again recanting a tale for that happened earlier. Now, the story itself is really good, and I really like the concept, but a way that I would love to see this improved, or could be improved, if the story was a kind of diary, where it starts off where the character is simply writing, you know, because, I don't know, he's writing for whatever reason, anger management, uh, because he likes to write stories, because he likes to do etc, etc, etc. Um, he's simply recanting tales that happen, maybe a few more arguments are sprinkled in there, and then after arguments, he gets muscle spasms, and the word muscle spasms is said at least three times to give it some thematic elements that could tie it together, allowing the audience to piece much more things to it, but it would generally benefit if it was a, if it was a much longer story. If there was more between the wife character and the main character, you know, because, I mean, to be quite frank, uh, the two have been living together for a year, I'm pretty sure that more has happened to lead up to this situation, because she clearly didn't do this to him right after they met, so there's clearly a reason why she kept his mouth not stitched, so to speak. Um, the ending revenge fantasy area, um, I really wish there was a little bit more believability because he can't move his body, so how is he going to, you know, find a doll, and if even if he does find a doll, he can't open his mouth, so and what's going to happen there? I don't know, because, I mean, like, cur currently it just kind of sounds like an old guy being tied to a chair. Uh, once you dig into this story, you, you kind of notice where its flaws become apparent. But nonetheless, the ideas that it presents are genuinely creepy. If it only was executed better, it would definitely be a great story. No, this is not a crappy pasta. But, nor is it a great. Murphy, I absolutely enjoyed reading your story. And although this isn't quite as good as the story, The Nice Guy, I definitely am glad I took the time and read this. I hope you enjoyed it, both you and the fans, and Murphy, if you're watching this, you're a magical, mythical pony from the magical land of adventure, and I gotta sign off, so I would like to say, 
DCR out.